بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم سید عاکف شاہ لیکچرر فائنینس ایٹ انسٹیٹیوٹ آف بزنس اسٹڈیز کوہاٹ یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی دا ٹائٹل آف دس کورس از بزنس فائنینس اینڈ دا کورس کوڈ فار کورس کوڈ فار دس سبجیکٹ از بی ایس 151 دس از لیکچر نمبر 19 اینڈ دا ٹاپک فار ٹوڈیز ڈسکشن انڈر دس لیکچر از رسک اینڈ ریٹرن we will define risk and return and then we'll try to make a nexus between the risk and return phenomena in finance the dear student the outline of this lecture comprises of defining the risk and return we will define both the phenomena in the context of financial management or business finance and then we will discuss measuring expected return using probability distribution for a security investment so dear students after listening to this lecture i assume that you should have grip on the following learning outcomes number first to understand the relationship or we can say trade off between risk and return trade off means if an investor is going to take high level of risk then there will be a trade off between risk and return and we assume on the basis of literature and past theories that there should be higher rate of return for that investment the second learning outcome is to understand how to measure risk return and the expected return of a security investment so these two learning outcomes will be covered shortly in this lecture let us define what is a return so in business finance or the course of financial management or the any course of security and investment analysis we can define the return in different scenario and context so before defining the return one should be aware of the investment opportunity or the investment option which the investor is going to opt for here we have taken the example of a share of any particular company which is listed on a stock exchange and the person is interested to find out what amount of return or the what percentage of return the investor is going to realize at the completion of one year when we are talking about the return on stock investment or share investment it could be nominal in terms of rupees or dollar currency like we have earned five dollar per share on the investment of rupees one Uh, on the investment of dollar 100 in a particular company or in other way around we can also measure the return in terms of percentages which will tell us what um, what percentage actually the investor have earned over a period of one year if he or she is going to invest invest certain amount of money in that particular stock or share now let us define this return return means income received on an investment plus any change in the market price usually expressed as a percentage of the beginning market price of the investment now what does this mean let us elaborate it in the form of formula as explained the income received on investment has been depicted by dt and as at the start of the definition of this return i have told you that we have assumed the investor is going to invest his money in the share of a company so dt normally represents the dividend received after the completion of one year from the company to the investor so this is the income this is actually an income received from by the investor from company where the investor have actually deposited his money so dt represents the income received 
after one time period which is usually one year plus any change in the market price this pt represents the share price today which is the current market price of the share let's suppose the investor have invested his money at the start of 2018 and at the completion of 2018 the next year will be 2019 1st january 2019 so let let us assume that pt represents the price of the share at january 1st 2019 which is the current price of the share minus pt minus 1 in the subscript t minus 1 represents the current time period minus 1 if you minus one year from 2019 we will reach at january 1st 2018 so basically we can say that the current market price of the share minus the previous market price which is previous market price before one year or we can say at the start of the time period where you have purchased this share this price represents the purchase price of the share and this PT represents the current market price. It will be discussed with the help of a numerical example in my next slide. So you need to plus this income received plus change in the market price and hold divided by the previous price which is the beginning market price. This PT minus 1 represents the price at which we have actually purchased the share of the company. This phenomena will be elaborated shortly in a numerical case or financial case shortly. Let us take an example to calculate the return. A stock price for company A stock, the name of the share is stock A was $10 per share one year ago like we have taken the example of 2018 and 19 so one year ago is 2018 the price of this stock was $10 per share the stock is currently trading at the stock exchange at the price of $9.5 it means that over the period of one year the, there is a decrease in the price of share which is $0.5 so this represents your current market price which is PT and this blue colored dollar 10 represents one year ago or the previous time period price which is PT minus 1 and the shareholder just received a $1 dividend from the company even though the price of the share has been reduced but still company has paid $1 as dividend to the investor and the question asks you to calculate what return was earned over a period of past year. So as we have explained the formula for calculating the return was the income received over the period which was $1. This is D. You need to add it over here. Plug it in the formula. Then put plus PT minus PT minus 1. Current price of the share which was $9.5 minus the previous year price or the beginning period price was $10 and whole divided by 10. With the help of simple mathematical calculation you reaches you reach to the answer which is 5%. This percentage is actually at the end of the calculation you are going to multiply it by 100. The resultant value of this algebraic equation or mathematical equation it will give you 5%. It means that the investor who have invested his money in the stock A of this company has actually earned 5% return over a period of one year. Now let us define what is risk. Risk means the variability of return from those that are expected. Let's say in our previous example where the investor has realized 5% return, 
However, the expectation of the investor from stock A was to earn 10% return over a period of one year. This was the expected return of the investor. However, the actual return at the completion of one year is 5%. It means that the investor realized return has been changed and is lower than what he has expected from the investment of this investment opportunity. So therefore, this variability from your expectation and the actual return is known as the risk factor involved between these two. Here is the narration, the variability of returns from those that are expected. So the expected return of the investor was 10%. However, the actual return the investor has realized over the period of one year is 5%. So therefore, the variability of return between the expectation and the desired and the actual return is 5%, which is known as risk factor involved in your investment opportunity. Here are some of the question written beneath the definition of uh, risk, risk, which are very much pertinent to address the phenomena like what are, what rate of return do you expect on your investment this year? The investor must have certain expectation which earlier we have explained that he was expecting 10% rate of return. What rate will you actually earn? Actually, the investor has earned 5% return. So therefore, the result of his investment is reduced by 5% to, to his expectation. So there might be certain factor involved between expectation and the actual return and those factors are known as the risk factor which could be any systematic and non unsystematic risk involved while you are investing in any investment opportunity. And about to question, a very much important question is written like, does it matter if it is a bank certificate of deposit or a share of stock? So as an investor or as a finance student, we are aware of the different investment opportunity available in the market. The bank investment is usually a secure investment and it has fewer risk than the share of any company or share of any stock. To invest your money in the company stock is highly risky and to put your money into the bank account in a, in a kind of certificate of deposit is a safe zone and safe investment. So therefore, there is less percentage of risk involved in your bank investment. However, there is high level of risk involved in the share investment. Therefore, there is a trade off between risk and return as per the investor's risk attitude. If the investor is looking to take high level of risk, he or she may will, uh, he or she will definitely opt for the share investment. However, if the investor is risk averse and has less number of amount to invest in, he will not prefer share investment, rather he or she will go for the bank certificate of deposit to earn a fixed percentage of interest over his investment. So higher the risk, let us conclude that the trade off between risk and return is higher the risk you are taking on, the more chances of earning higher rate of return and the less risk you are taking on, there will be less return realized at the end of the period. So we can conclude that there is a direct relationship between risk and return. Let us discuss about what is expected return as we have discussed in our previous slides. The expected return for a discrete distribution, there are two types of dis distribution or data available as far as the statistic point, point of view is concerned. The discrete data is in a solid form. However, the continuous data is in the decimal places form. The example of a discrete distribution can be the number of companies listed on a stock exchange. So this number of companies can be 500, 100, 200. 
However, it cannot be between 500 and 501. Like there is no decimal place involved in such data. And the continuous data involve decimal places like if you are measuring the price of a share over a period of time over the stock exchange. So it could be like $10, $10.2 or it could be at the end of the day $9.5. So such kind of data is known as continuous data and the discrete data is in not in the decimal form. So while the data involved in the case is discrete and we would like to calculate the expected return, the formula for calculating the expected return is R bar is equal to this sign represents the summation. You need to sum all the prob uh, uh, probabilistic, uh, probabilistic outcomes. So this summation sign starts with the summation sign. I start from 1 to n, the n number of possibilities, into Ri and then into multiply by Pi. Let us discuss these uh, notation one by one. The R bar represents the expected return for the asset. For the assets means financial assets where you are going to invest your money. Ri is the return for the ith possibility. Pi is the probability of that return occurring like how much chance is there a particular return will be realized by this security investment and n represents the total number of possibilities if you are going to invest your money in this particular stock let us calculate an expected return in our next slide by using this formula how to determine the expected return and standard deviation? Let us take an example of a stock named as stock BW which represents the basket wander. And if the investor is going to invest his money, he is assumed to have five different possible outcomes. This PIE represents the ith possibility of a particular return to be realized on the investment of this basket wander and Ri represents the possible return. So let us discuss the first case. As we know that the probability varies from 0 to 1. Either there will be no chance for a particular return or there will be 1 on 1 100% chance of occurring of a particular incidence or return. There are basically 10% chances are there, 0 0.10 represents, if we multiply it, this 0 0.10 with 100, it will give us 10%. So we can narrate or explain it that there are 10% chances that if the investor is going to invest his money in the stock of basket wonder, at the end of first year, he will realize a negative return of 0 0.15. 0 0.15 means if we multiply it with 100, it will give us 15%. And this 15% is negative. It means that the investor is, if the investor has invested $100 into the stock of this company, then at the end of the day or at the end of the first year, this negative 15% represent the loss of $15 over the investment of 100 and his investment will be left over with $85 only. So how much or how many chances are there to lose his money? There are There is only 10% chance to lose his money by 15%. And the formula asks us to multiply the first possibility with the first expected return. If you multiply both, we have 0 0.15, 0 0.015 negative result. Similarly, the next chance of this investment is 20% probability. It means that 20% chances are there that we lose 0 
and as well as negative sign is over there. So there is 20% chances that we lose our money by 3% if we are going to invest in the stock of basket wander. And the resultant multiplicative value is 0 0.006 which is negative once again. Similarly, there, there are 40% chances, 20% chances and once again 10% chances are there that we are going to realize positive return on this investment. So the data explained in this ex example, this is actually the part of the data available in the question. So we can narrate that 40% chances are there that if we have invested our money in the stock of basket wonder, we will realize 9% return on this investment and this 9% represents if the total amount of investment into this stock is 100 then at the completion of one year after realizing 9% of return and the probability of this accuracy is too much high on the basis of past trends of this company so therefore our resultant value at the end of the day or at the end of the period will be 109 dollar and therefore there will be a positive increase in our return. Once again you need to multiply both the columns with each other. Similarly 20% chances are there that we are going to earn 21% return on this investment and similarly 10% chances are there that we are going to earn 33% on our investment. We have multiplied both columns with each other and then the equation or the formula was asking us to sum these all possible number of expected returns. So I start from 1 to n and there are actually 5 number of possibilities so we need to plus or accumulate all of them to reach to our desired answer. So after summing them up we have realized or we can accumulate them to 0.09. And if we multiply this 0 0.09 with 100, if we are talking about in terms of percentages, then we will receive 9% as our resultant value. So this is the way how you can calculate expected return of a share or a stock of any company. If the data in the question is discrete in nature. The expected return for this investment opportunity is our bar for stock of basket wander is 9% but the actual return what the investor is going to realize which will be known to him at the end of the first year could be something else like it could be 8% it could be 12% so therefore the difference or variation between what has been expected to earn from this investment and what actually has been realized is known as the risk factor involved in these two values and this risk or standard deviation and coefficient variation will be discussed in the next lecture. I hope that you understand the nexus between the risk and return that higher the risk you are taking higher the return you will realize and lower the risk investor is taking on, the lower will be the return provided by that investment opportunity. I expect and I hope that you know about what is risk and return now in the financial context while you are investing your money in the stocks or in any other financial instrument. But still if you have any confusion in measurement and defining the phenomena, you can ask your question on KCMS or my registered email. Thank you very much for listening to this lecture. Good luck for the day. Allah Hafiz.